What just happened to you, dude? I got blown up. <laughs> so recently we filmed our very first short film, Havoc. If you haven't seen the film yet, please go and watch that first before you watch this, because I'm about to spoil the heck out of it. Okay, and go. us. Welcome. My name is Ryan. This is Fox and Crown Creative. We are an ad agency. We've been working with clients since 2013 and we have most recently been developing our video department, doing TV commercials, documentaries, client work. And most recently we've been getting into creating narrative films. For the longest time since I was eight years old, I think, I was making a uh, little <laughs> short films with uh, you know the home video camera and my cousins and my brothers we would just go run around I would come up with a script we'd shoot it I'd cut it on two VCRs and we had a little short film I'd even put credits in the end of it okay so first let's talk about why we wanted to shoot this short film so in everything we do and everything that we show on this channel it is to inspire creatives to create but it's also for us to learn new things practice new techniques about six years ago I decided to start our our video department here at Fox and Crown Creative and it wasn't till maybe a few years ago where we actually started to think about hey maybe we should try our hand in narrative filmmaking ultimately I thought that this might help when it comes to creating our lifestyle TV commercials and things like that I really enjoy storytelling story for me is key and more than the action sequences or the VFX or you know what camera we use to me the story is king and and if you ask any filmmaker uh, uh, they'll tell you the same thing. It's it's really all about the story. Okay, so let's talk about the crew. There was actually only three of us that worked on this film. Uh, actually, four of us. My wife came on as a visual consultant. Actually, she was the one that suggested the smoke at the end. And I'm glad that she suggested that because it was something that really added depth to the scene and it gave him a reason to bring his eye up to the sky and then eventually see the, the meteors falling. But other than that, it was me, my good friend Ollie, who is another filmmaker, friend of mine, and has been helping me with these short films and things that we've been putting out on our channel lately. Ollie really helped on the practical effects side. It was actually his idea to uh, use drywall and break it up into pieces when that big explosion happens. <laughs> Didn't see you there. <laughs> Just enjoying my lunch. What are we doing here? Um, smashed up a bunch of drywall and I'm gonna throw it at Ryan <laughs> for an explosion. The debris that's falling on me, that, that's all he's doing. He's the one that set that up. And also our dear friend, Taylor, who is actually our social media manager here at Fox and Crown Creative, but she's also a gifted script writer and a storyteller as well. And she was not only helping us on the story side of things, but also set design. She ran audio, she held the boom and making sure I looked all dirty and grungy and, and like, like I just been blown up. She did a bunch of different things and uh, I'm really grateful for her and for Ollie for really just stepping up and, and uh, making this film happen. Let's talk about the gear. In my opinion, it's the least important part of this whole process, but you need the tools to do the job. So here it is. We use the Sony FX3, which is what I'm using right now to film this talking head. We love this camera. This is one of our main cameras here at the studio. Um, and it does the job really well. We shot in the log profile, which is S-Log3, 4K, 422, uh, 10B. It. And we use the S Cine like, I forget what it's called, the S Cine something. I'll put a little graphic up here. For this film, we used very minimal gear uh, because it was just the three of us. We needed to move quickly. I put on the handle, the top handle that comes with the FX3. I used the Video Mic Pro. We actually have a proper mic. I'm using it right now. It's the Sennheiser MK600 and it's a wonderful mic. It sounds amazing. We didn't go with this mic. We actually just put on the Video Mic Pro on top of the camera and we kind of just use that as, as scratch audio. There's no dialogue in this film so uh, we didn't really find the need for a mic. However, uh, the audio that we did pick up, we ended up using for some of the, you know, the grunts and the, the sounds I was making as I was being tossed into a car or being tossed into the, the cupboards behind me. Just 
just kind of little things like that. We actually ended up using it and it sounded really good. I beefed up the audio in post just to make it sound a little bit more professional. And that was that. It just goes to show you, you don't need the most expensive gear to make your film. Just go out and make it. Beyond that, we used the Sony 35 millimeter lens, which I would love to show you, but it's on my camera right now. We used our aperture lights. We had our aperture 120D, which we used in all of the interior scenes. We used it for when our main character is drawing on his desk. We used it as the light above him and we put a warm gel on that. And then we also used it in the kitchen scene from when I get blown from uh, the room into the kitchen. To give that illusion, we turned all the other lights off, the actual room lights off, and we used that light only um, to just to light me up in, as my key. We used our Amaran 200D just as a filler light because it was pretty dark in the room that I was drawing in and I needed to light up my face just a little bit more. Yeah, and so other than that, we used, uh, you know, C-stands, a little bit of scrim, I think, and some duck clamps, uh, just little stuff like that. Let's talk about the story in pre-production. So uh, when I wrote the script, I wanted to kind of see if this was gonna work. As I said in the beginning, whenever we show something on this channel, it's usually because we're trying to learn a new technique. And in this case, it was uh, trying to sharpen our skills in VFX. I wanted to try my hand at it and get a few more reps in. And so that's how this project was born. I actually filmed what's called a previs inside my house. I filmed all the scenes, acted out all the scenes in the script, in the storyboard. And then I placed my VFX in that very poorly, mind you. I did all that. I put it all together, I showed my team, and they got really excited, really stoked, and it helped uh, to formulate this this film and, and do it in the way that we wanted it. It helped me pick the color grade that I wanted to, to have, the feel, the look, and it helped me to see how I was acting in each scene and how I can improve and make that better, because we all know I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not an actor. It really helped us to shape the story and uh, really just complete this film. So after I made that previs and I showed it to my team and, and we all got really excited to produce this film, uh, the next step was pre-production. We went through and started a Milanote. Now this is not a sponsor, of course, uh, but uh, we really do believe it in Milano and we use it for every project and not just video projects. We use it for graphic design projects, branding projects, uh, photo sessions, anything and everything for this agency, we use Milano. So we went in there, we created a Milano. We started mood boarding and storyboarding. We refined the script and uh, did a few more drafts of that. So let's talk a little bit about the filming. So our shoot days, uh, we shot this in three days out of sequence. The first scene that I shot was the uh, scene where I'm being blown into the car and I fall to the ground and I look up in the sky and lo and behold there are meteors falling from the sky or whatever it might be. Funny story about that scene, I, I broke my ribs. I don't recommend you hurting yourself uh, to make a film. Don't do not do that. Uh, please don't do that. So here in the PNW, it, it gets dark kind of late in the summertime, which is when I shot this. And it, I would say it was about eight o'clock, almost nine. I saw that it was blue hour and I had my camera and I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna call the whole crew and ask them to come with me at this time. They're probably with their families. I'm just gonna go and shoot it. So I put the camera on sticks and I went for it. The take that you saw in the short film that was my first take. I actually wasn't happy with that take. I wanted it to feel a little bit more just real. Like I, I really got hurt. I went for another take and, um, and on this one, I really committed. I ran faster. I flew into the car harder and I broke my ribs. Uh, after that, I just put the camera on sticks. I got my close-up shot. I got the shot from behind me, the wide shot when you see the meteors falling from the sky. And that was pretty much it. For practicals, I uh, dirtied my face up with some mud. It had just rained recently, so it was still you know, pretty muddy. Other than that, it, you know, my car was in the scene and those were the practicals. So that was day one. Day two, we filmed the explosion scene, set up all the lighting, set up all the practical effects. We also set up a crash pad below me to catch my fall because, you know, I was hurting. We put the curtains on C-stands and we pulled them away from the wall so that way someone can stand behind the curtains and throw the debris at me when the explosion happened. So we counted to three. The debris was thrown. I was thrown back. The curtains were pulled. The three of us moved simultaneously and it was just perfect. We did it in one take 
which is what we wanted. We didn't want to do it in multiple takes and have to reset. We counted to three, we got it. And it was, it was, uh, it was pretty incredible. The team did a great job. As the crew was setting up the lighting and getting all the practical effects together, I decided to film uh, the scene where I'm walking from the table to the curtains, just kind of get that one out of the way. The funny thing about that is I didn't wait for the lighting, so there wasn't the key light to be on my face. As you see the close-up, which I filmed the next day, you see the explosion getting closer and closer. The lighting would get brighter on my face and it was really warm, so it looked like an explosion was coming my way. But the day before, I didn't think about that. So in post, I just keyed out my face, threw some uh, digital lighting in there. It was only for a split second, so, you know, got to do what you got to do. And it may not be perfect, but I was happy with it. After that, we moved on to the kitchen scene. Um, by the way, all of the interior stuff was filmed right here in this studio. In the room that you see me sitting in right now, this is where we filmed the explosion scene and the part where I'm drawing uh, on my desk and also the close-up shots, the curtains, all of that was shot in this room. After this, we moved into the kitchen scene and that was filmed in our common room here in the, in the studio. And it looked like a kitchen to me. Uh, we timed it again. Ollie was now on the camera and he was going handheld because we wanted this to kind of feel like a, an action sequence. You know, it's, it's a little bit more gritty. There's, there's pain involved. There's, there's an explosion. So we, we wanted that camera shake. Ollie got low to the ground and he pushed in with the camera and I pushed myself right into those cabinets, Taylor through the debris and, uh, there you go. We shot it all on 120 FPS because we wanted to slow it down at first, but then in post we decided to not slow it down. It just, it made more sense and, and it flowed better um, at normal speed. Action. After that, we shot all in one motion. Me sitting up from the ground, looking at the door, and then getting up and walking out. You see a shot of the door in between all of that, but we actually shot that all in one take. The only reason why we threw the door in there was because we needed something practical for it to make sense that he's looking in that direction. And it made sense for the story that he would be looking for the exit. <laughs> So after that, we wrapped that day. That was actually the longest shoot day that we had and then probably the hardest one. And so on day three, I was by myself again and decided to shoot just all of the detail stuff. I filmed the multiple angles of me at my desk uh, drawing and then I filmed the curtains and then I filmed the close-up shot of my eyeball and you can see the little meteor going across my eyeball there. That was all VFX. For the shot of me uh, flying back in slow motion, that was done with a desk chair, actually. <laughs> I have these desk chairs that we use around the office and they all have rollerblade wheels on it. So they glide across the floor without making hardly any sound at all. And so I hopped into one of those, put the light on me with a warm gel on it to create that explosion light up effect. And then I threw myself back in slow motion, filmed the whole thing all the way through. After that, I filmed just another angle of me flying back and piece those two together along with the last shot that we shot the day before. For VFX, I'm not gonna get in too much depth about this, but here are a few of the uh, VFX that we used. Hey, future Ryan here. I uh, just wanted to clear a couple of things up. We're about to head into the VFX portion of this vlog and I realized that I might've missed a few things. So I wanted to explain that here. First off, there's so much that goes into VFX, but if you were to wrap it up into a nutshell, there are two main stages. The first being the creating of the VFX. That means taking an idea and creating it from scratch using something like Blender. And the second stage would be implementing that effect into your scene. Both of these stages have tons of work involved and they're not easy to do. However, um, these are the two main focal points that I'm gonna be talking about right now. So when it came down to creating our VFX, we actually decided not to create from scratch. We decided not to create our own VFX because we wanted to feel comfortable with implementing them first before we invested any time in creating our own. 
We are currently in the process of learning to create our own, but we'll save that for another video. So what we needed was a good base to work from. And to do this, we decided to go to bigfilms.shop. It's a VFX company, I think based out of LA. Um, this is not a sponsor, by the way. They're just amazing VFX artists and they provide this for a cost. And to me, it's absolutely 100% worth it, especially when you're doing something like this. We knew that this film was gonna kind of be VFX heavy, so we decided to take it in stages. No digital effect will ever look perfect right out of the gate. It takes a lot of work and tweaking to make it look realistic and to not be distracting. There are a million things that you could be thinking through to make sure that your VFX look realistic and that they fit well within your scene naturally. Take this scene for example, the meteor is coming down from the sky. I originally filmed this at night during my pre-biz and it looked good, but the light from the meteors were a little hot and I had to really blend them in to make sure that they looked realistic. So that's when I decided to change it from filming this at night to filming it at blue hour because during blue hour, it kind of soaks in a little bit of that light from the meteors and it just looks more natural. You really want it to fit within your scene well and naturally to where it almost seems like it's really happening. So you gotta take the time and blend them in nicely. So anyway, these are just a few reasons why we took this route in doing the VFX. If you'd like to see more about how we did these VFX and how we blended them in, uh, let us know in the comments if you'd like to see a video like that or if you'd like to see a video of how we create our own effects. We'd love to do that for you too. But anyway, let's get back to the video. Uh, some of the things that we did, you wouldn't even notice like the keyframe around my face for the explosion scene. And some are very obvious like the meteors that are falling from the sky. Here are a few of the VFX that we used on the exterior. Uh, obviously we had the meteors. That was actually the easiest thing. We also had the smoke rising in the distance and all of the embers and ash that you see in the air. That's all VFX as well. You see the meteor falling from the sky into the ground that pushed me into the car. That was one of the harder ones to do. For the interior, there was a couple that were really, really hard. Like I said, that close up of my eyeball, you'll see the meteor. That was one of the hardest things that I needed to do. I had to move it frame by frame. Other than that, there was the explosion scene. I added some uh, debris, some digital debris in there, uh, some smoke, and that's pretty much it. It was a lot of work doing the effects on even just those few things and VFX work is as difficult as it is. And so we didn't want to overload ourselves with too many VFX. Also too, we felt like because it's such a short film, too many VFX would take away from the story and be a little bit too distracting. So anyway, that's a bit of a breakdown on how we filmed our short film Havoc. Uh, let us know if we missed anything or if there's anything that you'd like for us to go in depth about. We have a few more short films that are in the works. We're writing scripts right now and revising scripts. We'll keep you updated. There is one that we will be releasing hopefully soon. It's called Run. If you haven't seen the trailer for that yet, please check it out. There's a link in the description below. We have a much bigger crew on this one, higher production value. So please stay tuned and check that out. There are also a couple of other short films that are in the realm of Havoc where they'll be filmed probably just by myself or with a much smaller crew, uh, something that we could turn around a little bit quicker. If you like this video or if you learned something, please press that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, peace.